Hey everybody, this is my 125 gallon native tank. What we're looking at now is one of my crayfish has a piece of algae wafer and is in there working on it. Uh, but that is not going to be the topic of this video. I uh, just finished a water change. That's what all this detritus floating around in the water is from. The tank's still all stirred up. I literally just finished. I put the hose away. But I wanted to shoot this video while the topic was still on my mind. I wanted to point something out about this tank. This is a native tank, and the fish in this tank are considered cold water fish. And that's because they're North American natives, and they have to overwinter. At some point, they're going to be in water that's really cold. And they have to be able to survive that. So one of the common misconceptions when people hear about cold water fish is they think that they need to be in cold water. Now, some species do. Uh, trout, for example, need pretty cold water. Uh, one of the fish that I would like to put in this tank is a black crappie. And black crappies don't do well in water above the low to mid 60s. So I would have to get a chiller put on this tank in order to get it down to an appropriate temperature for the uh, black crappie. I love the way all the fish just sit in the current after the water change now. It's all fresh new water coming in and with the current like that, uh, this probably simulates a rainstorm out in nature, all the fresh water coming in uh, with all the detritus swirling around and all the stuff stirred up in the water. So they're probably doing what they would normally do, which is sit in the current and wait for all the rushing water to bring all the food particles downstream for them. And that gets me back to my point of what I was going to say with the cold water animals. When I did a water change here, I did maybe a 20%. I took about 5 or 6 inches out of the top of the tank. And when I started filling it back up, my furnace was running because I had just done a water change on my 125-gallon African-themed tank. And... You know, my water, my hot water runs right off of my furnace. So I'm actually burning my uh, heating oil in order to heat my water. So it's not really cheap way to heat your water. The benefit of the, doing it that way is that you get endless hot water. It just, get, you know, every time it starts getting cooler, it heats it back up. And you can run the hot water pretty much indefinitely as long as you don't run out of uh, heating fuel. So, I just, for whatever reason, when I started filling this tank back up, I heard the furnace run in, and I thought, why am I wasting all this money heating water to put in a tank with cold water animals? So, I turned the hot water off, and I just filled the tank with cold water. And, of course, I have tap water. I mean, I'm sorry, I have well water. So, after running it for about 15 minutes, and all of the water that's in my little pressure vessel reservoir has been used up, it's pretty much water that's coming right up and out of the ground by that point. So when I let my cold water run for a good 10 or 15 minutes, it gets cold. It's spring water temperature. It's 55, 60 degrees tops. And so I put, you know, four or five inches of very cold water back in this tank. And while I didn't take the temperature of the tank before I did the water change, you know, I can guesstimate well enough that it was probably just under 80 degrees based on how it felt when I had my hands in there and I was cleaning the glass down and everything. I don't think it was up to 80 degrees. I've had that real hot light fixture turned off. It is actually turned on right now. You can see how bright it is down at this end of the tank. Uh, I turned that on for the purposes of shooting this film, and hopefully I'll remember to turn it off when I'm done because it really warms the tank up. So I don't think I was quite up to 80 degrees, but I was probably pretty close. And when I got done, just for the heck of it, I measured the water temperature with my um, infrared, and it said 73 degrees. So I definitely dropped the water temperature at least 5 full degrees, maybe 6 or 7 degrees even, here in the tank. And it's not going to bother these animals at all. And that is the beauty of cold water fish. It's not so much that they have to be in cold water, it's that they can stand being in cold water and they can go through rapid shifts of temperature pretty quickly. Again, think of the natural environment these animals would be in. If they were in a small pond, uh, if you had koi or goldfish or carp or something in a pond, and it was hot August, late summer, 85 degree pond, and we had, you know, a big rainstorm that dumped a couple of inches of rain over a few hours, 
it would dramatically shift the temperature in that pond and it wouldn't bother those goldfish or those carp at all because they're cold water animals and they can tolerate overwintering in a pond that's got a sheet of ice over the top of them. So I don't know how quickly they could go from 85 down to 30, but they can do it and it doesn't bother them. So when I'm doing a water change in this tank and I shift the temperature five degrees, it doesn't bother these fish at all. In fact, years ago when I had my 40 gallon tank and it was a native tank, I used to do huge water changes uh, again, this was before I had a lot of experience, and I just thought getting as much of the bad water out and putting as much fresh water in as I could was a good idea, and I used to take it down until there was just enough water in the tank that the fish had water to be in, and then I would fill it back up. I would basically kind of almost empty the tank and then refill it, and I wouldn't refill it with any warm water at all. I would just run cold water back into the tank, and by the time I was done the water change, the tank was sweating. It literally had condensation dripping off the outside of the tank because it was so cold in my warm, humid basement with all these fish tanks in it. And then suddenly I've got this, one of my fish tanks is probably 60 degrees all of a sudden, and it would sweat like a cold, you know, a, a cool, tall drink. And I never experienced any kind of shock with the fish. Now, I did lose a lot of fish in that tank. It was a pretty rough and tumble tank. Uh, again, very little experience. A lot of big, aggressive fish in a very small tank. But I never noticed any kind of shock after a water change. I never noticed the fish acting stunned uh, or anything like that. I never thought twice about just doing a full water change and taking it literally from probably 80 degrees down to 60 degrees in one water change. In, in a matter of 15 minutes, I would do that to them, and it never seemed to have any impact on them at all. So that is where you get into the real significance of when you talk about cold water fish. Again, some species do really need to be in cooler water, but that's not necessarily what defines them as a cold water fish. There are some tropical species of fish that need to be in temperature in the lower 70s or maybe even the upper 60s, depending on where they come from. You know, you can live in a tropical region, but if you live in a mountain stream, it's not going to be 82 degrees. And so some of those fish do require cooler temperatures, but that doesn't make them cold water fish. That's not what cold water fish means. So anyway, I feel like I've made my point. I feel like I'm rambling at this point. Uh, make sure you subscribe. You don't want to miss any of the videos i got coming up. You never know what you're going to get with me. Don't forget this one is my native tank. Thanks again for watching. I'll see you real soon in the next one.